Hello, this is Josh with Techtopia TV, and this is the review of the Roku 3. All right, so um, overall, I would have to say that the Roku 3 is actually a pretty good device. If you don't have any way of streaming anything currently, then it's definitely a, a, a good way to go. Um, I kind of did in a video already for this for a review, but I didn't really like the layout or the way that I did the video, so I figured I would redo it and try to shorten it up. I did kind of make it pretty lengthy and I really thought that I should uh, shorten it up a little bit more. So I'm kind of kind of just break it down to just pros and cons that I feel for the Roku 3. Um, I currently have a Chromecast, like I said in my unboxing video, and the setup for that was extremely easy. Um, using it is also extremely easy. And so that's kind of what I'm comparing the Roku 3 to. So the first pro for that, uh, or for the Roku 3, is the easy setup. It is easy to set up. It's not quite as easy as the Chromecast, in my opinion. Um, but it is pretty easy to set up. You do have to make an account for Roku, um, which they give you the website right there on, the, on it. And you go to the website, you make up a username and password and create your account and then it allows you to um, you know come to the home screen which I have up right now is the home screen here it'll bring you to the home screen and you're set um, the other pro that I have is the great UI I mean as you can see um, it really does have uh, it's it just looks clean uh, it, it works it does everything that I could ask it to do, and I mean, what, what's not to like? It, it looks good. It does what it says it's going to do, and that's it. That's what I want. Something simple and easy, and it looks good. Anybody could figure it out. The other one is the headphones in the remote. Now the remote is really nice. I do like the fact that you could, I mean, everybody knows how to use a remote nowadays. So you can just hand it to somebody and say, okay, you know, here's, here's Roku 3, you know, browse through the menus or whatever and find what you want to watch. If I did that to, you know, my parents or uh, my in-laws or anybody else that doesn't really know how to use, you know, this type of technology and everything, they're going to be able to figure this out. It's not hard, it navigates, I mean it has the arrow keys on it, the pause, the play, I mean it, it literally lays everything out for you. It's very simple to use. So that's really good. The Chromecast on the other hand requires you to either use your computer and you know installing a uh, third, you know, the, the casting option, uh, the extension, I mean. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to even add extensions on the browser. The other thing that it requires, if you don't want to use your browser on your computer, is it requires your smartphone. Well, I know several people that like to stream YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or whatever, but they don't own a smartphone and they don't want to own a smartphone. So for those people, the Chromecast really is kind of not a choice at all. So um, the remote is definitely a good thing, but the main thing that I was pointing out was that the headphones on the remote, it has the headphone jack on the side of it that you can plug the provided headphones into, and when you plug it in there, it takes the sound from whatever you're watching on the Roku, sends it through the Bluetooth through to the remote itself, and then plays the audio out through the headphones. So you can use the volume rocker on the remote, and you can watch anything that you wanna watch, and you're not interrupting anybody or disturbing anybody late at night or if your you know, spouse is next to you or whatever reading a book at night and they don't want to listen to whatever it is that you're watching, you can just plug in the headphones, any headphones. You don't even have to use the ones that were supplied with it. I listened to it, I tried it out with three different headphones that I own and all of them work fine. So that is a really good feature there. I do like that a lot and I can see a lot of people using that. I know several people at work where I work uh, would like that, that feature as well. And it's a, it's a pretty good selling point. I mean, it really is. Because a lot of people do a lot of viewing 
late at night, they don't want to wake up their kid or whatever else, they can use this option. It's perfect. Um, another thing is that it does have a ton of channels. That's a pro and a con. So I'm going to get to the con part of it later. But it is a pro. There's a lot of stuff to choose from. Like, um, let's see, if I go to um, streaming channels, okay? So this is all the channels that you have available to choose through. So you have the featured ones. I mean, you have Portico, um, Google Play, Winner's View, GoPro, Pandora, iFood.tv, Popcorn Flicks. These are all the featured ones. You have all the new channels that just recently came out that they added. So there's a bunch of different ones on there. Anime Network, um, I don't know. There's, there's just a ton of channels available. Um, most popular, of course, you're gonna see Netflix and Hulu and YouTube and Amazon and Pandora and Sling and all those, because those are the ones, I'm not gonna lie, this is what, why it's one of my cons as well, You'll notice that all the ones that you've heard of before, HBO Go, Plex, Watch ESPN, all that stuff, are all on the most popular because those are the most ones that you're going to use on this. Sure, it has 2,000 plus channels, but of those 2,000 channels, maybe 50 of them you actually know. The other ones are just channels that I personally know that I would never watch or use. Um, so that's why it's a pro and a con. There's tons of stuff. You got top free, top paid, uh, Roku recommends uh, the games because yes, you can play games on it with the A, B, and the the uh, directional pad. You can play like Tetris comes on it already, and there's a bunch of other ones, Angry Birds type things, and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of cool. I could see maybe you're letting your kid use it or something, but other than that, I don't see a need for having games on it. So then you get down to genres, you can look up by music, apps, comedy, educational, fitness, and all that kind of stuff. Kids and family, lifestyle, news and weather, photo apps, religious, science and tech. Um, so you have CNET, NASA, Revision 3, Popular Science, um, Test Tube, Retro Tech. So I mean there is a lot of good ones, then you can just hit the home key and it'll take you right back to home. So there's a lot of channels, but the problem is, is a lot of those channels you don't know and probably never will watch. So yeah, it has a lot of channels, but chances are you're not gonna watch them all or hardly any of them. In my opinion, this is again, in my opinion. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, the other pro is, is that it's got uh, the ability to do wireless or wired. So you can do a wireless connection like the Chromecast does or you can do a wired connection. So you can run an ethernet cable through the, your wall or the jack that's on your wall or whatever, and you can hook it up wired. So that way you don't have to worry about any kind of, you know, uh, your wireless cutting out or something in the middle of the movie, maybe not hitting enough bandwidth wirelessly. If your router can't handle that, then you can hook it up wired and you won't have any problems with bandwidth. Now, um, one thing I will, say about that is that I was watching what was it Mad Men on AMC through Sling TV the app because I had a seven day or whatever free trial so the I was watching Mad Men on AMC and I was getting like one megabyte a second bandwidth it looked horrible it was extremely pixelated it looked just it, it looked bad and I had it set to no limit, and I know that my router can stream way more than one megabyte a second. Um, and I have no issues with that whatsoever. I have no issues with the video quality or anything on my Chromecast, but for whatever reason, it wouldn't go above one megabyte a second. It did jump up to like 1.4 a couple times, but then it kept falling back down to 0.8 megabytes a second, and the quality was absolutely horrible. So I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe it's just having a little bit of wireless trouble. So I tried hooking it up wired, which my router is right there on the other side of the room from me. And I ran it right over here to the Roku, which is, this is a little box right here. I hooked it up there and then um, tried it wired and it didn't change. 
it was still hovering around 0.8 megabytes a second and jumping up to maybe 1.5 at, at, at some times and then it would drop right back down to 1 to 0.8, 0.9. So the wired and wireless didn't make a difference at all while watching Sling TV. It didn't help at all. So I don't know what that was all about. I don't have any issue with streaming anything else through my router. So I highly doubt that it was my router that was causing the problem or my network. Everything was fine running it any other, anywhere else. It was fine. But the Roku, for whatever reason, it didn't, it didn't get the bandwidth. It wasn't allowing the bandwidth to come through. I don't know if Sling TV was just being stupid. I have no idea because that's the first time I've ever used Sling TV. So I don't know much about it. Um, the other pro I kind of already mentioned with the easy setup is that uh, it doesn't require your phone. So you don't need to have your phone to control it like you do the Chromecast or well a computer you can use for the Chromecast as well but most people that have the Chromecast are usually either using their tablet or they're using their smartphone to control it. To add, you know, add videos to the TV queue or whatever on YouTube or streaming Netflix from the app or Hulu from the app or anything else from the app. Like I use Allcast to um, cast other videos and all that other kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, you can use your, your computer or your laptop or whatever, that's all fine and well, but most people use their mobile device to control their Chromecast. And a lot of people, like I said before, like to stream stuff, but they don't want to have a smartphone or they don't own a smartphone. So that's a pro. It doesn't require a smartphone. It has its own UI. It has its own remote to navigate. It has its own little box. It's it's set up to go and you plug it in and that's it. You're done. So that's a, that's definitely a plus. So um, that's pretty much it for the pluses for me anyway. So now I'm going to go into the cons. The one con is most of the channels require a, a subscription. So obviously Netflix and Hulu um, and HBO Go, Amazon, uh, Sling TV is like 20 bucks a month. Um, so if you add up like the eight bucks or whatever it is for Netflix, the eight bucks it is for Hulu, the 99 a year for Amazon Prime, uh, 20 bucks for Sling TV. Um, uh, yeah, there's some that have free and they do free movies, but there's tons of commercials throughout them and everything else So it's just not not the same. It's like watching cable TV again with commercials breaking up all the time um, Other than that you have some of these other channels like I, I think I tried to add to my home like here we go the um, Watch Disney ones the Watch Disney ones require a uh, cable subscription. So you have to have a cable, uh, have cable to get access to these channels. So the main reason why I look at these Roku's and Chromecasts and Fire Stick TV and Apple TV and uh, Netgear Neo TV and all these other things and on all that, the, re, the, the way I look at those things is that they're for people that want to cut the cord. They don't want to be have a cable provider anymore. They want to tell Comcast or uh, AT and T or whatever to just go, you know, jump off of a cliff or whatever. And they want to go strictly internet only to cut the cost of the bill. They don't like paying all that money like me for hundreds of channels when I only watch like maybe six of them. Um, so that's what I see these things for, but then you try to go access the stuff and it requires a cable subscription. Well, I don't want a cable subscription. That's the reason why I bought a Roku or a streaming device. So that right there kind of really kind of irks me. I mean, I know that it's something that they want to get their money, but let me pay for your service. That's all I'm asking. Just let me pay $5 a month or whatever to watch ABC and TBS or something like that. And I'm good a la carte um, uh, cable service. That's all I'm wanting. Uh, nothing more. Um, but uh, tons of them required that though. I mean, a ton of them required subscriptions. And that was their own subscriptions or a cable subscription through your cable provider. Now, one thing that I noticed is that I have Bright House here in Florida and Bright House wasn't on the list. So if I tried to do, do like uh, the Watch Disney Channel, 
it came up on a list of ones it said to sign in or whatever through their website. So I went to the website on my cell phone, loaded it up, and then it says pick your cable provider. I hit the drop down and I sat there and cycled through literally it was like hundreds of cable providers. Some I've never even heard of. Some are probably from different countries I'm sure. Never heard of any of these and Bright House wasn't on there. And Bright House is in Florida, Georgia, I want to say the Carolinas, Texas, Alabama or Arkansas, and California. But yet it's not on the list. So that really irked me because now I can't watch it. Because Bright House didn't want to make a deal or they didn't want to make a deal with Bright House so they couldn't come to some kind of agreement or whatever it might be, I'm screwed now and I can't watch these channels. Well, I can because I can just turn on my cable box from Bright House and watch Disney. So the whole needing a cable subscription in order to access their channels on a streaming service makes absolutely no sense to me. Why would you watch it on the streaming service whenever you can just watch it right on your cable provider. I don't get it. Um, another one for me, a uh, con for me, was the video quality seemed to be low. I had it set on 1080p, my TV is 1080p. I used this TV here, which is a Westinghouse. It's not like the best quality. Um, this one I have in my bedroom and it's usually on for like maybe five or 10 minutes while we try to fall asleep and then that's it. So we didn't really care. We just wanted something that we could see uh, for the time that we were awake watching it. So anyway, um, I have a Sony, 46 inch Sony out there in the living room and it is crystal clear with the Chromecast but for whatever reason the video quality was shoddy. Like sometimes it was clear, other times it wasn't um, and it was just, it, it was all over the place. I was watching a, a Twitch stream um, of some Counter-Strike matches that were going on over the weekend and I had it playing on the Roku and the quality was way worse than my Chromecast. So the Roku is like eight, eight to ten feet away from my wireless router. I mean my wireless router is literally like right down there and it had to go to here and the quality was worse in here than it was going from here through this wall and all the way across my living room to my TV into the Chromecast that's plugged into the back of my TV. So how the little tiny Chromecast can produce a better picture from further away through interference and walls than the Roku can, I have no idea. But I tested it on every type of app that I could get to. Now don't get me wrong, there was times whenever the Roku was clear and I didn't have a problem, like whenever I was I tested streaming some or casting some things to it from my phone. Um, I tried going on YouTube. YouTube was crystal clear, and then sometimes it wasn't. So it was very hit and miss. I don't know what that why this was wired or wireless. I tested it both ways, gave it a full rundown and everything else, and I don't know. It made no sense to me. Um, the other thing is, uh, the other con was kind of what I mentioned about the tons of channels. Yes, it has tons of channels, but 90% of them I've never even heard of, 90% of them I would never even watch. Some people might know what they are, they might be foreign channels that I don't know about, or they might be some indie, a lot of it is indie. I mean, I'd say probably 50% if not higher than everything that is on here is all independent stuff, like independent shows, independent movies, they're not high budget, they're really crappy, um, things that I would never in my lifetime watch. You know, if I'm taking my time out to not be working on videos or at work or doing something with my family and I'm watching TV or I wanna watch a movie, I want it to be a, a high budget, good quality film or show. I don't wanna watch something that three dudes filmed in their backyard in a suburb somewhere and try to turn it into a movie. I, I just, I'm not into those. I, I just, I can't. I've tried it before and I end up laughing through the entire thing because the quality is such crap. So anyway, I mean, it, it might work for some, it doesn't work for me. So it's a con for me, but it might be a pro for you. You could probably dive through all of these crazy channels and watch things that you never would have thought you would watch. And some of them might be good. I'm not saying that they're crappy, all crappy, 
But the ones that I watched and tried to watch that were independent films were just bad. But I know like Hurt Locker, I think, was an independent film. It was by like an independent director or something like that, and it ended up being a crazy blockbuster movie, and I enjoyed it. But it was a higher budget indie film. It wasn't like some of the stuff that you see on these channels here. Um, so that that was my last con was that it, most of it is all indie stuff and I, and independent channels and stuff that I've never heard of and would never watch. So for me, at ninety nine dollars. If you like the layout, you like the UI of it and everything else, I could see somebody buying it and see people liking it. I understand why people like it because all I've heard was positive reviews about it. So that's the reason why I picked one up is because I have people at work that are constantly asking me about it and I wanted to be able to give them a, a true review and say, yes, I've used it, yes, I've messed around with it, and yes, I like it, but... Here's some issues that I had. I do like it. I would say I'd give it a probably, i give the Chromecast just because of the cost and ease of use and how small it is. I give the Chromecast like a, I'd say, with some of the issues that I've had, I'd say eight out of 10. And I give this one probably about a six because it does everything my Chromecast can do, does a little bit more, but all that little bit more stuff is stuff that I don't care about. So for me, the Chromecast fits me perfectly and it's a third of the price. So in my opinion, if you're like me and you have gadgets and you have your cell phone and you don't mind using your cell phone as a remote or you know how to work your computer to where you can cast things from your computer, then I would suggest going with a Chromecast over this. If you're somebody that doesn't have a, a smartphone and doesn't want to use your laptop or your computer to cast things and install extensions on your browser and all that kind of stuff, and you just want something that you can pick up with a remote, hit some buttons that are easy to follow along with, they even have a hotkey for Netflix. Like if I hit the hotkey for Netflix, it launches Netflix. And apparently it's unable to connect. I wonder if it's because I have it set to wired, probably, and now it's disconnected. Most likely. Anyway, you have hotkeys for you know Amazon and Hulu and Netflix and radio and all that other kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're that type of person that wants something very simple that you can pick up and just use, then this is the one for you. So there's my video. I cut it down a little bit. I didn't take off as much as I was thinking I was going to, but I really wanted to give an in-depth review. I didn't want to just go in and say, it's good, buy it. So I kind of wanted to give my points of how I felt about it. And I hope that I did a good job explaining what I mean by the different pros and cons that I had. And, one, you know, as always, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, obviously comment below. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and obviously here on my YouTube channel. All of them are Techtopia TV, um, which makes it really easy to find me on all the different uh, uh, um, social media and everything. So if you have any questions, if you have any concerns or comments or any ideas of things that you want me to review or tutorials and all that, then please hit me up on the social media and tell me what, you, what it is you want to see or what it is you want me to do. So once again, this has been Josh with Techtopia TV and thanks for watching.